move the streets, move along dim-lit corridors of neon. Old shoes beneath tired legs are their transportation. Eyes which can see too little or have seen too much guide their way, both giving service to a continuous search for the necessities of life. Food, a place to sleep, a measure of human contact. One does not find much of any of those things in the habitat of urban concrete. In short, it's a life that degrades, that robs a man of his dignity, his energy, and his self-confidence, and it very often leads to a tragic end. This does not have to be the case, however, and the proof of that is the building behind me and what goes on inside of it. It's the city rescue mission, and this report is a brief story of its work and of its needs. The City Rescue Mission of Lansing was founded in 1911 by Thomas Emily Dalton. Thomas, a former alcoholic who had once been violently opposed to Christianity, felt called to minister to men who were as he had once been, lost, angry, and shackled to sin. For over three decades, Thomas and his wife worked together to meet spiritual and physical needs, sometimes giving away the last of their own food to help someone else. World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II captured the heart of the nation, but in Michigan's capital city this faithful couple earnestly prayed that God would send someone to help them minister to their community. John Beck, their son-in-law, stepped forward to shoulder that responsibility, serving with Emily after Thomas's death until she passed away in 1949. In 1948, with the help of Leon Kellogg, John Beck created the Mission Board of Directors and set up Articles of Incorporation. This assured that the City Rescue Mission would survive beyond the limited life of any one person. John Beck also directed the purchase of the mission's first permanent home, 611 East Michigan Avenue. With the passing of John Beck, Leon Kellogg took on the mantle of board president. Grandson of the founders, Leon led the mission board for nearly four decades. The mission has seen many changes since it was founded in 1911. The stereotype of a homeless drunk wandering the streets has been replaced with the reality that women and children make up the fastest growing segment of the homeless population. The mission has the largest shelters for men and for women and children in Michigan's capital area. Our men's shelter is always a clean and safe environment and our women and children's shelter in our newly renovated Maplewood Center has the capacity for as many as 130 beds for women and children. From a loaf of bread and a bowl of soup during the Depression, the mission's public dining room now serves over 90,000 meals a year. Food donations from compassion organizations, churches, businesses, and individuals help pack the pantry. These non-perishable food items are the base ingredients for three meals a day, 365 days a year. The mission food pantry also provides hundreds of boxes of food a year to low-income families and individuals in need. Through the years, hundreds of thousands of articles of clothing have been provided to men, women, and children in need. From clean socks to a warm winter coat, these items are freely given to our guests. In 1970, then Superintendent Harold Sullivan expressed a desire for a men's rehabilitation program. Today that program is state licensed, and some of its graduates remain at the mission as staff, helping others as Thomas Dalton did more than a century ago. In spite of the many changes, the mission's central purposes remain the same, to shine the light of the gospel in a world that is lost in darkness, and to take the message of Christ's love to those who are hurting and hopeless.